you were treated differently. And you had to get used to that then. Then you, you know, you found yourself in, in a weird land because of all these people you'd grown up and lived with. Suddenly you, it was the one place you didn't want it to change because it all changed out there. And you were never secure, really, who your friends were unless you had them before. After the success of Please Please Me, and after achieving the best-selling single in the history of the United Kingdom with She Loves You, the Beatles began an inevitable rise. They had conquered the European market. In the UK, after singing for the Queen at the Royal Variety performance, they had established their prestige as a young sensation, and all eyes were on their second album. Less improvised and with more time to record, with the Beatles combined the success formula of Please Please Me, original recordings, and some routine covers for the band. The album helped the band's target. With half a million sales pre-ordered and I Want to Hold Your Hand as a single on the side, the Beatles would open the way for their next goal, succeeding in America. George Harrison is resting his arm. Don't in the camp. Missed it again, eh? Well, go. Take seven. The Beatles rarely had a day off in 1963, working a punishing schedule of recording sessions, concerts, dozens of radio and television appearances, and numerous other public engagements. But perhaps, one of the most important days of that period was October 13th, when they appeared on Sunday night at the London Palladium, before a television audience of 15 million winning over Fleet Street journalists who coined the term Beatlemania to describe their fans' hysteria. And the following month, they appeared before the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret at the Royal Command performance. And while this was going on, Brian Epstein traveled to the United States to negotiate a contract that would bring the Beatles to the Ed Sullivan Show. Ed Sullivan first heard about the Beatles when he and his wife were at London Airport returning to New York and witnessed 1,500 screaming fans welcoming the Beatles back to England after a successful tour in Sweden. Brian Epstein secured a contract for three TV appearances, and although the sum of $10,000 was small, his manager knew that if he could put the Beatles on the map, they would conquer the American market. In contrast to Please Please Me, which was almost recorded in one day, With the Beatles was recorded between tours, starting on July 18th, then restarted at the end of the same month, September 11th and 12th, and one more session on October 3rd. By the time they came to record With the Beatles, Lennon and McCartney had used up the best of their original compositions. George Harrison, too, was emerging as a songwriter. His first released composition, Don't Bother Me, was recorded for with the Beatles, although its author later dismissed it as a throwaway. And apart from his original songs, they decided to include six cover versions. The choice of the songs demonstrated the group's maturity, with a greater emphasis on Motown and R&B songs. And after the recordings for the album were finished, the band returned to the studio two weeks later to record their fifth single, I want to hold your hand. And with both releases in stores in November, the Beatles wanted to prove their success was no accident. They gave me a list of their songs and, and they were all thinking in terms of singles still. Um, we weren't thinking in terms of an album being, uh, you know, a piece of an entity by itself. It was a collection of songs. And all we did was to record singles and uh, or and the ones that weren't too good we wouldn't issue as singles we put them on an album which is what with the beatles was the first song on the album features early beatles trademarks such as call and response yeah yeahs and scaling guitar riffs typical also of this phase of beatles songwriting is the melodramatic ending similar to she loves you which had just been recorded and was about to be released you know you should to you Also, the chorus is a play on the words be long and belong that Lennon used in his compositions of that period. The Beatles recorded this song on July 30th, 1963, in two sessions. The first session was in the morning, where they recorded 10 takes. The second session was in the afternoon, where they recorded seven more takes. The final product was a combination of takes 17 and 21, put together on the 21st of August. 
With this song, Lennon says he was trying to do Smokey Robinson again, and Ian MacDonald compared it to You Can Depend On Me by The Miracles. This song is a clear example of the Americanisms used by the Beatles in their lyrics to, consciously or unconsciously, seek approval from the American public, in addition to the fact that these songs also showed a strong influence of the U.S. artists that the band admired. Close your eyes and I'll kiss you. All My Loving is one of the highlights of the album. According to journalist Bill Harry, McCartney thought of the lyrics while shaving. I wrote All My Loving like a piece of poetry and then, I think, I put a song to it later. However, McCartney later told the biographer, Barry Miles, that he wrote the lyrics while on a tour bus, and after arriving at the venue, he then wrote the music on a piano backstage. He also said, It was the first song where I had ever written the words first. I never wrote words first. It was always some kind of accompaniment. I've hardly ever done it since either. The Beatles recorded the song on the 30th of July, 1963, in 11 takes with three overdubs, and immediately became part of his concert set list. Also, it has been hypothesized that the piece draws inspiration from the Dave Brubeck Quartet's 1959 song, Kathy's Waltz. Don't Bother Me was George Harrison's first effort as a songwriter in the face of a few spaces that Lennon and McCartney would leave him. Feeling sick one day, George Harrison was prescribed tonic and bed rest by a doctor. With nothing to do in his room at the Palace Court Hotel, he began writing a song, recording himself on a portable tape recorder. The surviving recording includes him working on the bridge and whistling through the song's melody, likely because the song did not yet have lyrics. <laughs> In his 1980 autobiography, I, Me, Mine, Harrison describes the song as an exercise to see if I could write a song. I was sick in bed. Maybe that's why it turned out to be Don't Bother Me. <laughs> Little Child was always a filler song. It might have been one of the less sophisticated and impressive tracks on the record. McCartney admits he took the melody of the line, I'm so sad and lonely, from the song Whistle My Love by British balladeer and actor Elton Hayes and the song was recorded between September 11th and 12th, and October 3rd of 1963. Paul McCartney was introduced to Peggy Lee's 1961 cover of the song through his older cousin, Bette Robbins, who would occasionally babysit the two McCartney brothers. McCartney said that he had no idea until much later that it was from The Music Man. The song was part of his set list in 1962. It was even recorded for the famous Decca session, but it was less impressive. With George Martin at the head, and the band more confident, they decided to record it again. They changed the electric guitar for an acoustic one, and the atmosphere changed completely. It became illustrative of the Beatles' versatility, proving that they could appeal to all sections of an audience, moving easily from softer ballads to harder rock and roll. Wait, oh yes, wait a minute, Mr. The Beatles' great admiration of the music of all female bands was no secret, as they had already covered songs by groups such as the Shirelles, the Cookies, and the Donays, and Please Mr. Postman was part of their live show repertoire since December of 1961. The band recorded three takes in a similar style to their BBC performance, but found the results unsatisfactory. They altered the arrangement to sound closer to the Marvelettes version. Due to their different vocal range from the Marvelettes, the Beatles modulate their version into A major. Between recording two takes of overdubs, the band added hand claps while Lennon double-tracked his original vocal. Take 9 was marked like the best. George Martin and Norman Smith mixed the song for mono and stereo on the 21st of August and 29th of October, respectively. Roll Over Beethoven was a favorite of John Lennon, Paul McCartney, and George Harrison, even before they officially called themselves the Beatles. Recorded on July 30th and featuring George Harrison on lead vocals, the band offers one of their best covers. Like everyone else at the time, the Beatles loved Chuck Berry, and their version was full of power and emotion. Hold me 
Hold Me Tight was composed principally by Paul McCartney in 1961 and was part of the Beatles' stage act until 1963. They attempted to record it for their debut, Please Please Me, but after 13 takes and believing that they were not getting anywhere with it, the song was discarded in that session. Seven months later, they returned to it as a filler song. Both McCartney and John Lennon, at one time or another, shared their low opinion of the song. In a 1980s interview with Mark Lewison, McCartney says, I can't remember much about that one. Certain songs were just work songs. You haven't got much memory of them. That's one of them. And Lennon, in 1980, said, That was Paul's. It was a pretty poor song, and I was never really interested in it. According to Rolling Stone, Paul McCartney once said, Smokey Robinson was like God in our eyes. And you can tell they thought that on those early records. Nowhere was Robinson's divine presence more felt than on With the Beatles. The band loved Motown music, and this cover is one of the best moments of the album. The Beatles recorded the song on July 18th of 1963. It was completed in seven takes. The group then recorded four edit pieces. The final version was an edit of takes 7, 10, and 11. I Wanna Be Your Man was a song the Beatles gave to the Rolling Stones to release as a single. But that didn't mean the band had no intentions of recording it as well. It was always intended as a part of With the Beatles. As it was a filler song, they decided to give it to Ringo for his classic number. This was the best decision they could have made with the song, because Ringo's personality gave it a strength that neither Lennon nor McCartney could have given it. The song became essential in their concerts, and one of the audience's favorites. Even Bob Dylan described it as one of his favorite Beatles songs. Although John Lennon was dismissive of the song in 1980, saying, It was a throwaway. The other two versions of the song were Ringo and the Rolling Stones. That shows how much importance we put on it. We weren't going to give them anything great, right? She's got the devil in a heart. The Donays were not such a famous group in 1963. In fact, they never were. But their luck changed forever thanks to George Harrison having a copy of their single, Devil in Her Heart. After playing the song for one of the BBC sessions, George convinced his bandmates to record it for the album. Without much effort, the Beatles stuck to the original version and managed to record it quickly as another filler track. You know you made me cry. This is Lennon and McCartney's last composition for the album, technically all by John Lennon. The song has a funny story. When a serious journalist in the UK made an article analyzing in depth the compositional qualities of the duo, where he even compared Not a Second Time with the Song of the Earth of Gustav Mahler's. Lennon, years later, remarked, To this day, I have no idea what Aeolian cadences are. They sound like exotic birds. <laughs> Money is another example of the Beatles' breakthrough between this album and the Decca session. The difference is huge. It rescues the spirit of his Hamburg days. The group discovered Strong's version of Money at Brian Epstein's NEMS record store and it was recorded in seven takes on July 18, 1963, repeating the formula with the iconic closing of Twist and Shout. Money powerfully closed out all that was to come. All my love, I will to the LP had advanced orders of half a million and sold another half million by September 1965, making it the second album to sell a million copies in the United Kingdom, after the soundtrack to 1958 film South Pacific. With the Beatles remained at the top of the charts for 21 weeks, displacing Please Please Me, so that the Beatles occupied the top spot for 51 consecutive weeks. Parlophone issued With the Beatles on 22nd November, eight months to the day after Please Please Me. The album became the first Beatles album released in North America when it was released in Canada on the 25th of November under the augmented title Beatlemania With the Beatles. For the United States release, the original running order of With the Beatles was unevenly split over the group's two capital albums. Nine tracks were issued on Meet the Beatles, the eight original compositions plus Till There Was You, while the remaining five songs, all cover versions, were placed on the Beatles' second album. With the Beatles served to confirm that the Beatles' phenomenon was more than just a teenage fad. In the UK, they were gradually gaining respect, but there were still journalists who attacked them with things like this. Don't let the Beatles bother you. If you don't think about them, they will go away. And in a few more years, they will probably be bald. Impressed with Robert Freeman's black and white pictures of John Coltrane, Epstein invited the photographer to create the cover image. Harrison later said that, whereas the cover of Please Please Me had been crap, the second LP was the beginning of us being actively involved in the Beatles' artwork. 
the first one where we thought, hey, let's get artistic. The group asked Freeman to take inspiration from pictures their friend Astrid Kircher had taken in Hamburg between 1960 and 1962, featuring the band members in half shadow and not smiling. To achieve this result, on the 22nd of August 1963, Freeman photographed them in a dark corridor at the Palace Court Hotel in Bournemouth, where the band was playing a summer residency at the local Gaumont Cinema. To fit the square format of the cover, he put Star in the bottom right corner. Since he was the last to join the group, he was also the shortest. McCartney described the results as very moody, adding, People think he must have worked at it forever and ever, but it was an hour. He sat down, took a couple of rolls, and he had it. The original concept was to paint the picture from edge to edge, with no bleeding, title, or artist credit, a concept that went against music industry practice and was immediately vetoed by EMI. The first album to carry an edge-to-edge -edge cover was the Rolling Stones' self-titled debut, released five months later. EMI also objected to the fact that the Beatles were not smiling. It was only after George Martin intervened, as head of Parlophone, that the cover portrait was approved. Freeman was paid £75 for his work, which was three times the fee first offered by EMI. The widow of Meredith Wilson, the composer of The Music Man, has stated that her husband's estate eventually received more income from the royalties of the Beatles recordings of Till There Was You than it originally received from the actual play. In 1963, Beatles manager Brian Epstein approached Gordy for the rights to record several Motown songs, including Please Mr. Postman and Money. Rather than the industry standard of two cents, Epstein only offered one and a half cents per record sold. Gordy initially refused, only relenting two minutes before the offer was set to expire. EMI Australia did not receive the cover art and used different shots of the band in a similar style to the black and white photograph on other releases. The Beatles were unaware of this until fans showed them the cover during their only Australian tour and informed the EMI publicity staff that they were not pleased with the substitution. The album was ranked number 420 on Rolling Stone magazine's list of 500 greatest albums of all time in 2003 and was included in Robert Dimery's 1001 Albums You Must Hear Before You Die. Based on the album's appearance in professional rankings and listings, the aggregate website Acclaimed Music lists with the Beatles as the third most acclaimed album of 1963. The band were still bound by the technological limitations of the time, and the album was recorded entirely on two-track machines. It was only from I Want to Hold Your Hand that the group moved on to four-track recording. The peak of the Beatles' fame in the UK and the rise of their reputation in Europe was inevitable. But there was one more step that the band had longed for since its beginnings, reaching the American market. The Beatles admired American music so much that they had little faith as to whether their music could make an impact in that country. They already have it all. What can we offer them that they don't have? Said Paul McCartney in 1963. But on November 22nd of 1963, the same day that With the Beatles was published, the sun went out in America with the assassination of John F. Kennedy. The optimism of the time was gone. The American society lived a morning never seen before. And the Beatles, with their two previous albums, and I Want to Hold Your Hand as a single, would be the perfect medicine for a country that needed them. That's all for now. Subscribe to our channel and share. And we invite you to check out other albums from our collection, Classic Albums. Thanks for watching. This is Music Box.